we find ourselves a billion years into the future. After many civilizations have come and gone, and in their wake they have left the Earth as we knew it, completely changed and forever weird. We are in a remote region of the world, a world that many call the beyond. And we're in the city of Pikala. We are here at a time shortly after a great discovery has been made to the southeast in the Lambent Fields. A automaton or the body of an automaton was discovered. It had three heads, multiple arms, covered in cryptic markings. It was at least three times the height of a human and it left an impression on almost anyone who saw it. Another thing that was unique about it was that it was carrying a strange ceramic bowl and what looked like a die with strange pictograms on it. Your characters may or may not have heard this story. You may have heard parts of the story. You definitely know that there was a discovery because in the city of Pikala, there has been a great political fracture. Disagreement over what to do about this has caused people to think that this discovery is of religious significance, that this discovery should be left alone, or it's just stirred up the national identity of the city of Pikala to lay claim to the Lambent Fields as their property, basically, that they have the right to do with what they want. That opinion is probably winning out were it not for the fact that an organization from the West, speaking a language that you may not fully understand, has arrived. They call themselves the Order of Truth. And their presence has not been without controversy. We are going to open our story up in Sovereign's Chamber, which is the political hub of Pikala. You are in the very halls of political debate and theater. Each of you have been summoned here. Right now, this large political hall, which is usually filled with people who come to listen to and watch and participate in the debates, is completely empty, save the four of you. You can introduce yourselves, what you look like, or any other distinguishing aspects of how you came here as you wish. Rylan is sort of uh, like sitting wherever, anywhere that there is some like a bench or something like that is just sort of sitting on it, just sort of absently fiddling with like some uh, something kind of just metallic um, has like a like a metal uh, like like a like a scrap metal like what looks like a basically like a walking stick or something like that just sort of leaning on his shoulder as he just sort of leans forward. Um, he's probably like about 30 or so. Um, and even here this far away from the wastes, like there are, there's parts like in his clothing and his like small, like his, his, like, uh, his beard, like you can see that there is still like, there's sand still in it. Um, and, um, sees seems entirely unconcerned by that fact um and he's just sort of like looking around the room like seemingly waiting for something to happen what about armada i was kind of waiting towards the end <laughs> but <laughs> she would kind she of wait just... for the end though i don't think she's one who would wait for well maybe that well would no, she it, it's she, she's you know, fashionably late fashionably late <laughs> um she bursts into the room and starts looking around and she goes uh and just starts talking um yes i'm here i believe maybe my mother called me or something um but she's long braided pinkish hair looks like she's dyed it wears rings of all various colors and different types of metals uh has earrings and jewelry and necklaces wears a coat very colorful white coat with embroidered gold around it kind of a higher collar um very nice boots very well maintained and on her back is this thing that kind of looks like a box with a handle 
and has uh, keys on it or, or these depressions on it and she kind of straps to her back uh, you may know her, her in town she's kind of well known for telling stories and hanging out uh, in inns and so forth weaving her stories and hanging around in artist communities and she just strides in and is not quiet about it and is trying to find out why she was summoned. Isip is, uh, before Armada came in, was uh, leaning against the wall, um, definitely looked up towards the ruckus, but it's still deep in thought and um, flipping his uh, uh, his multi-tool in his hands, which is a little thicker than uh, the average pen and um, just kind of flicking it uh, in between the fingers like one would um, with a pen when they're um, just kind of fidgeting. And um, I everything that I'm wearing is just really practical. Nothing sticks out other than like the tool in my hand and I have a little satchel um, that hangs like pretty loosely on my side. I've got boots and um, I've got a, a bit of a vest that has uh, some pockets. They don't look too full because everything's pretty meticulous and um, I, I try to be pretty practical about what I carry around with me. But um, even though I was momentarily distracted um, by um, Armada's entrance, um, I'm still like deep in thought about um, everything going on regarding the automaton that was found um, because I feel like any decisions made going forward are going to have some major consequences. And um, I would say I'm about six foot, six foot one, a um, little bit uh, bulky, but um, I, even though I have like pretty confident posture, I try to take up as little space as possible when I'm around people. Oh, and uh, shortcut hair. I have a buzz cut. So I stand at a commanding five foot two and I'm just sort of like standing around. I'm wearing like a very sort of green, bright, white and yellow sort of, it's not quite a tunic, but it's also not quite shirt and pants either. Somewhere, somewhere in between those two, it's like a mix of, you know, sort of like natural fibers and then maybe a sort of like flexible synth that makes it kind of waterproof at least that's the idea and i'm just kind of standing around watching and waiting sort of towards the center of the room but not like dead center um i one thing that anyone who's known me for a long time would probably think is odd this is this is the least equipped that i have ever appeared like i'm not carrying anything no weapons no salvaging gear absolutely nothing just me which is a little weird probably but yeah i'm just there chilling out all right so it's it's about um it's still morning and um, the morning sun is kind of flooding into the Senate chamber. It is casting these long shadows from yourselves and from the many seats and chairs all over the place. And it's quiet and still. Um, there are uh, open air kind of arches in here so you can smell the morning air uh, moving in. And there is an enormous slam of a door and you hear footsteps coming from where the shadows are casting against. And appearing out of the shadows is Stackle Spire, Armada's mother and the city director, followed by Lorne Mam, the mag of the Populous Priory, the religious sect who is has a very particular religious uh, uh, perspective on this discovery. They are also followed by a couple of other people who you may or may not recognize. Um, uh, if you have been to any of the debates that have taken place in these chambers, uh, these represent sort of the other factions, uh, the other political identities. And probably other than just the overall command of these powerful people walking in, what's very unique is that Lorne Mam is carrying what looks like a flower, almost like a sunflower, with these petals that almost look like glass and a blue stem and they walk into the center of the senate chamber lorne Mam sets the sunflower down it comes up to about their knee and they look at all of you
Uh, yes, mother. <laughs> um, not my face, but Stackle Spire's face <laughs> remains perfectly still. Um, and she looks at the four of you and she says, I'm glad you're here so early. I don't intend to waste any time. Um, so I'm going to talk about this very directly. The city's in somewhat of an awkward position, both hmm. with the discovery, political fracture, and now the presence of the Order of Truth. <sighs> There's no other way to do this. So, and she turns to Lauren Mam and she says, you might as well show them. Lauren messes with a few things on this flower and what you see is the florets in the center begin to open up and light begins to portray out of it. And it takes the form of this holographic image that hovers there in the air. And it looks like a robed person with a mask. The voice sounds affected in some way or not natural. So it's very hard to identify this person. They say, you can call me exegesis. The discovery in your city has undoubtedly caused some friction there. For this, I should apologize. To the north, there is a settlement named Yosh Ul, and there is a woman there named Vona, who once came to this world with a specific agenda, an agenda that was lost that is until this discovery. I'm risking a great deal by communicating this and I'm very sorry that I have to be vague. I know this doesn't help. What was discovered in the Lambent Fields needs to be taken north to a town called White Lake. This has to be done under complete secrecy. Vona has eyes and agents everywhere. The message then continues to repeat. They let it play out maybe two or three times before turning it off. Um, at this point, I think Rylan would like stand up and like actually like pull down like his his hood which sort of like reveals like he's basically he has like an undershave which with like uh like um what looks like diodes and things like that sort of attached like underneath like right at the line um and like the uh everything from like that is visible like from like neck up to the jawline is like metallic um and as he like just sort of steps forward he says are we sure it's a good idea to move that thing? Look over at Rylan. I say, I don't understand how we're supposed to go about this with such vague instructions and vague reasoning. Stacklespire interrupts and she says, this message was partially reconstructed. It had suffered some damage on the way here. There could have been some details that were left out, although I will admit it was vague too. Do we have any reason to trust this person? This arrived before the discovery was made. Moments before. What do we know of this exogenesis or Yona? Nothing. This Vona, from what we have gathered, is some type of elder. The town to the north appears to be a settlement for a variety of nomadic tribes. Um, they have a number of elders. Apparently, Vona is one of them. It's been hard. I have I've resisted probing too much and asking too many questions.
So you trust this? Well, I, Lorne, the other groups have been meeting in secret. Our disagreements are very real. The debates we have are of substance, but we have been forming agreements behind the scenes. The organization that arrived from the West put me at a bit of a, well, put me in a difficult spot. They claimed to have expertise over the Numenera that would help us navigate the consequences of this discovery. I, with my hands tied, especially now hearing this message, I had decided to let them into the Lambent Fields as to not anger them, lest we bring any unwanted attention from the nations to the West. And that's why I've turned to the four of you. So you're going to let us anger them instead, is that it? Well, I do not wish there to be any official political movements on my behalf to go into the Lambent Field or do any of this, but my daughter, who is often known for getting people in there, whether they were supposed to or not. Hmm. I know of your daughter's reputation. A tour guide, as it were. One of religious devotion to the discovery and a mechanic are certainly the kinds who might go in there of their own accord. If you understand what I'm suggesting here. Basically, if we get caught and get in trouble, we're on our own. Better us than the whole town, don't you think? Better nobody than us. Consider that this message is truthful and that the consequences of this ending up in the hands of this Vona could be devastating. Are you, all of you, willing to have that on your conscience? What was dug up from the earth was dug up from the earth. All right, so let's just, let's say we, let's say we agree. We got to go in there and get this thing and then take it upriver, is that it? To White Lake, yes. A portion of the message that was damaged uh, referenced a tavern called Sunset Eulogy. Now, I... Should this all turn south, should you end up in some trouble, you do have some unofficial backings of the government of Pikala. Provided you don't cause too much of a ruckus. In other words, try not to kill anybody. <laughs> Pretty much anything short of murder or substantial property theft. Well, who owns that discovery as well. <laughs> That's part of what a lot of this disagreement is about, so. Hmm. Now, officially, all mining operations and voyages into the Lambent Fields have been put on hold, save the Order of Truth. They specifically requested that they, and only they, were allowed to go in there. I have agreed to this again, to not bring any more interest from the West over here. And sure, it's a controversial opinion that'll have some people arguing, which is good enough cover to arrange the four of you to be here and try to decide what to do. I cannot provide you with any means to get into the Lambent Fields, but again, being as resourceful as yourselves, and she looks very clearly at you, Armada, you perhaps know of a way or two to get in there. 
I thank you and this council for having such great confidence in us. And it is such an honor for me. And I hope the rest of you feel the same way of the way that we are going to be able to contribute and keep this community safe. Which just, is all I've ever wanted to do. I just like look sideways at Fidget and just raise an eyebrow and just don't say anything. <laughs> Stacker that, just exhales. Is that bullshit? <laughs> is that bullshit? This is the kind of overconfidence that makes me hesitant to do anything to do with the automaton. Has there been any news as to what's been the consequences of interacting with it at all? None. In fact, the only consequences we can see are the conversation we're having right now. Just to recap, we have to get into the Lambent Fields around an order calling themselves the order of truth which you know definitely doesn't raise any flags or anything like that get this this thing that we don't know what it does to take it to somebody who we don't know who they are or what their stake in this is on the orders of someone who we don't know don't understand their orders and don't really uh know what their motivation is it's when you about... say that mm -hmm. that's when lorne steps forward uh, and he says these are the principles of faith, yes. Well, I can't think of a single reason why not. Hmm. Because I can think of several. <sighs> but you make a good point. The thing's out of the ground. One way or another, we're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, and I'd rather be there too try to disturb it as least as possible even though we're gonna have to transfer it better us than these westerners hmm. i think we can all agree on that stackle spires steps forward adjusts the sunflower a little bit and she says this was a bit this message was of course more vague than i would have liked but to be clear this was sent with it and the image adjusts from the person to the bowl and the die. It said nothing of the automaton, so I guess don't worry about having to transport the massive automaton. It's specifically these objects. Mm. It came with this, and she sets down what looks like, honestly, a flower vase with a large bowl and a neck. And you can see a portion in the middle where it would sort of connect or unscrew. This is the device, allegedly, this exegesis wishes us to contain those objects in. It was specifically clear that this should not be attempted to be operated or messed with until you have found those objects, no matter how curious some of you may be. So this won't even be as straightforward as described in the cryptic message. Well, I feel like I have no choice but to say yes at this point. Get the feeling. I get the same feeling. Mm. So, when do we start? As soon as you can. Mm. Well. And keep this secret. <laughs> Rylan like just sort of glances towards Armada and just like doesn't say anything just sort of brings the hood back up and just says well let's go what is the most correct or respectful way to address um what is it uh Lorne Man um there is sort of a an end piece of a prayer in a very old language um, mm -hmm. that's kind of used as as a as a departing message. So something it translates something to the effect of, um, you know, walking under the the gaze of the ancients, mm -hmm. something to that effect. 
Uh, but like, what is their title? If I wanted to just like catch their attention real fast. Oh, um, like what, how how would you address? They are specifically the mag. Okay. So they are they are in charge. Mm-hmm. Um, Mag Lauren. Yes. I have to ask. Is this right? Those objects don't belong to us. No. You're very correct, but scripture often talks about unlikely scenarios involving unlikely individuals who carry us on to a new age. Perhaps. Passages ripe for uh, interpretation by hubris. Anyway, how are we supposed to keep you up to date of our progress? When you have delivered the item, Stackle Spire says, you can come back to Picola and inform us. Let's get going then. Yeah. Well, for those of you who don't know, I'm Easy. Nice to meet you all. And I hope that we could be the. Uh, companions that we all need in this unfortunate but necessary endeavor. Fidget, good to meet you, he said. Nice to meet you, Fidget. Rylan Eris, I think probably most of you have, like, we have, like, at least a Mm -hmm. small connection, most of us. Like, most of you, most of you have, like, had dealings with me specifically, but, Yeah. yeah. Uh, Armada, and I am here for you all, and I'm sure that our our fellowship will be one of. Great all right, let's success. go. Uh, you've <laughs> made it known you're here, Armada. <laughs> R- well, we were all wait introducing for that to ourselves. R- Ryland does not I wait for that to finish. I was just following suit. I'm sorry if I offended. <laughs> <laughs> I have just the place for us to speak. Hmm. I'll follow. I go to whatever the quietest inn or back hole bar there is. Yep. So that might be in Gray's Market, um, which is kind of... I do want to be close to that area. uh, That is sort of the main hub of anything. (laughs) All fun and all business tends to be conducted there. Um, There's also a residential-ish area, um, usually not much going on there. And then there is, of course, uh, what is referred to as the sockets which a lot of people believe is the remnants of some old ancient city-sized power supply possibly of of the previous worlds um specifically because it has these enormous sockets that look like something must have been plugged in there but it has since been repurposed for the mining companies to store their mining equipment in there as garages and hangars Hmm. before meeting up with everybody i am going to run on home and open up a large spherical chest that I have not opened in a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pop this open and retrieve my bow, Mm -hmm. my exploring uh, equipment, and all the things I will need to complete this venture. Man, Fidget ran off in a hurry. (laughs) It is probably... It was looking a little under-equipped as I've normally seen her, so... Mm. She may be going to grab her accoutrement. I've never understood the uh, inclination of you city folk keeping any of your stuff not on your person or Mm. just having stuff that can't be kept on your person. Interesting. Yeah. I can see where you can think that. But it is nice to have a home where you can keep those things and feel grounded in within the community. But but of course, you know, if you, you move around quite a bit, I could see where that could be cumbersome. Mm. I could see there's going to be no friction during this endeavor. <laughs> uh, so perhaps you have communicated to Fidget where to meet up with y'all. Um, so you head south into town into Gray's Market. Um, it's a little bit lower in elevation than where Sovereign's Chamber is because it sort of looks over everything. Um, 
and you enter a myriad of streets and walkways that have these uh, tarps suspended over them that glow and sparkle and they filter the sunlight into different colors. So everywhere you look, it's just a patchwork of, of a kaleidoscopic collision course of different colors. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a, sort of a central hub area where there are a lot of popular stores, um, some new and upcoming ones as well. So you said you might want to be, you want to find a place that's out of the way, Armida? Yeah, and maybe quiet this time of day. Mm -hmm. So I'll say that you you find a place um, which is, it's a bit quiet, uh, but what grabs your attention first is probably there is a, a store that looks like it's still being set up. Mm. And uh, there are, there's a giant sign above it. It's a small store. There's not a lot of room to work with. Um, and it just has the letters E, F next to each other, and then U. Hmm. Are there people setting things up? And it's It seems like there's somebody f further back in the store, because you can mm -hmm. hear some things being knocked around. And of course, Fidget, you can insert yourself into the scene whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'll probably just show up as uh, as quickly as I can. My mm -hmm. detour was not that long. So I'll say, Fidget, when, when you arrive, um, coming out of this shop with the three letters is what is known in the ninth world as a marger. These are kind of goat-like abhumans. Mm -hmm. um, and this goat person sets up a ladder climbs up and sort of starts messing with some circuitry behind the sign mm -hmm. and it glows and, and flashes and then it starts glowing and flashing really fast and then a bunch of sparks shoot out and then it completely falls down and another marker comes out of the shop and they start bickering in some like weird goatish language yelling at each other uh do the uh, these marker they own the shop right or one would hope. run it okay <laughs> yeah for sure uh in that case then i'll sort of go over to the sign and begin to you know sort of pick it up if it's broken maybe attempt to sort of get all the pieces together just try to you know help them out a little bit um immediately one of them turns to you and says oh we don't need any help we're good oh, we're sorry good. sorry hmm Sure, you don't need any help with that. We um, saw it just fall over, and um, I don't know. Doesn't look like you really know what you're doing much. And uh, my companion Fidget over here was just trying to help. Hey, it's okay. It's mm. all it's okay. all it's all his fault. And he points to the other Marger who's up there, uh, who went up there and is now barking down some stuff in 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 this kind of goatish, yakking language. Um, did you say that something? something broke something fell up what what happened yeah what pieces was... of the sign fell off they sparked oh. and then fell off and um yeah hmm. right well if they don't want any help I'd... do you all oh. think we should go inside and start i'm going to um kind of throw back my coat a little bit and <laughs> and i have this demeanor about me demeanor of command uh, i'm going to spend the <laughs> Okay. And I'm going to walk up there and go, welcome to the community. I am so glad that you've made it here. Um, <sighs> and if there's anything we can do to help, we you can see that our members here are really want to help. And that's all we're trying to do. We are not trying to barge in at all. And I am just a tad bit curious about what type of wares you will be having in your shop it looks quite curious well uh, the one who's on the ground like turns to you and says i am elks and that one up there is named foil mm. we've traveled a long distance to come here to um sell experiences and when he says experiences you hear um some weird squeaks and foil up top pulls out what immediately first looks like a snake but it's got a cat for a head 
And he says, see? Beb got up here in the electronics. That's why the sign is screwed up. Mm. Your damn pet. We got to get rid of this thing. While this was happening, Isip takes a pace back and postures up a little bit. <laughs> um, and uh, Elk sort of says, never mind about that. We sell um, experiences. Uh, ha- have, have, have you heard of the data sphere? Mm. Have I heard of the data sphere? Well, you certainly all probably have some understanding that there is this kind of ever-present realm of mm. information that exists in the ninth world, often referred to as the data sphere. Yes, or data sphere. Mm. Yes. I will say both interchangeably throughout the course of this game. Choose one. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I have heard of it, but I yeah, I don't believe that I've experienced it. Ah, well, um, so we uh, have an, an artifact inside, and that's when you hear Foyle say, the artifact doesn't work yet. Well, when it works, um, it worked once, and, and then there was a problem. When it works, um, you can go to the data sphere, and believe it or not, um, there are complete uh, uh, aspects of history preserved there. You can see the lambent fields exactly how it existed some 50,000 years ago, maybe more, maybe less. I don't know how numbers work, but there might even be ways to go there through the data sphere. And you just happened upon this artifact. Yes. <laughs> well, I think Ryan that actually sounds quite about that. exciting. Thank you for sharing with us. Um, would you happen to need help with maybe getting this artifact running again? And if if maybe by chance we could have somebody that could get this thing running again, would we be able to use it free of charge? Hmm. Uh, I think at this point, Rylan is kind of like starting to follow this train, this line of inquiry, and it's just like, and just sort of nods and says, I have some knowledge of uh, of Numenera and can uh, attempt to at least see see if I can at least diagnose the problem for you. Ah, oh, see, a very helpful community. Yeah, and as much I don't like messing with artifacts at this point, sounds like it would be helpful. So, if there's any fine tuning that needs to be done that I could help with, I'd be happy to in this situation. Yeah, yeah, come on in, come on in. He, he, he gestures for you to follow him into the store. Um, and if you do, the place is an absolute disaster. Um, there are machines laying everywhere. Uh, there's wires and cables falling out of stuff. Um, there's a giant cage with this weird bird, but it maybe doesn't have feathers. Maybe it has scales. Well, they kind of look like scales and feathers at the same time, and it has three eyes, and it just looks at everyone individually with I its three eyes. I don't love the question mark that you put on the end of bird. <laughs> that makes me a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> in uh, in seeing this, I put my head down and shake my head at the uh, disorganization, and I clutch my heart like it's hurting me deep in my soul. <laughs> I wave at the bird. <laughs> hey, buddy. The bird lets out this sound that almost sounds like it's mooing. Moo. <laughs> kind of exactly like that. Um, yep. Yeah, sort of like a lost cow that is mm-hmm. just like searching for something or yeah. Um, but not before long, Elks returns with what looks like a bracelet and says, this is it. I don't really know what I was expecting, but I guess I was expecting something. Ah, amazing. But when it works, it spits out a little disc and then that disc will turn your entire body into information. Hmm. Hmm. 
We we had a I friend. Start looking at everybody else. <laughs> Do we, we had a friend in the Baja Denu Forest who did it. We let, let's not talk about the right. I, Wait, it what? seems to be missing a part. Wait, no, back up there. You're saying that we become information, and you're about to say something, and you stop yourself. Can you please I back say? up and expound? It's missing a part. If you become information, does that mean you die? No, you you become information. I believe. Good. What about what about <laughs> unbecoming information? Is that yes. a part of the process? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so my understanding is that there are places in the world called vertices, and this produces a vertis. And I'm told by some nanos that you, you what they call, uh, data scribe into the data sphere. And you can exist there for as long as you want. And then if you find another vertis, you can come out the other end, what they call real scribing. It should be hard. It is harmless. If could be or is is. So let me just kind of recap things just a little bit. So you use this object artifact. Is that what we're calling it? Mm -hmm. And it transfers your essence into this data and puts you in this this realm called the data sphere. Yes. And so you no longer exist let's say here, but you exist there in this place. And then you can find other places to go to from there. Can you come back here? Oh, yes, yes. Oh, and okay. we think there's a vertice in the lambent fields. And with the lockdown, this might be the only way to get in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. At this point, I'm just gonna like, you'll, you'll see as like all of a sudden, like, uh, um, Ryland's eyes like take on sort of like a sheen uh, that like um, almost like you can see like I'm, pi I'm I'm picturing it just sort of like like there's almost like a projection within like in the eye as it just sort of like um, kind of clouds over um, and I'm going to use my scan ability sure. on the artifact uh, my edge eats it so um, mm -hmm. it says scanning a creature object always reveals the level um, how, like uh, you also learn whatever facts the GM feels pertinent about the matter and energy uh, in that area um, I'll learn a lot about like basically like it boils it down to basically like learn I will learn information about it but like not what that information means Mm -hmm. So, like, it's just, this is beginning the preliminary understanding of this thing to try to, like... Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think when you do that? How do you think you, you see that information? How do you think that processes in, in, mm. in Riven's mind? I... Hmm. I think it's just sort of, like... I don't think it's quite so technical as, like, having, like, a data readout... Mm -hmm. But it's also probably not quite as mystical as just knowing. I think it, I think it's somewhere in between those things where it's like I'll be like it's like I just sort of like my vision just sort of like will focus on different parts of it and aspects of it, and it's like those things get highlighted to me, and then I just like just look know things about that piece. Okay, so uh, so the technical answer for that question is that this mm -hmm. is a level five object. Okay. Um, and indeed, you can start to see these like ways in which the, this device is actually sort of connected to the data sphere. Um, and it will, in fact, uh, you can see sort of at the end where it would connect onto someone's wrist. Um, there are these kind of uh, uh, conductors that actually will sort of print in the air physical matter. Um, hmm. And according to what this marker had said, it would produce some kind of coin or token uh, that would then serve as a vertice. So as far as you can tell, um, yeah. Okay. And like, it does appear to be like functional. Like it's not defunct or anything like that. Like, well, right it now it's, it definitely is not right. working. Right. It's Which not is working, what... but it's like, it's not like damaged or like forever. That's more what I'm asking. Like, it's not, is there any way to like determine that? Uh... 
I will take a crafting Numenera check. Okay, I have I have understanding Numenera. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, cool. So, uh, yeah. Let's see. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I might have here. Actually, if I could, if I like, if I basically just like, give that information to Issy and I say, want to help me out with this thing, to, like, taking this, looking this thing over. Yeah. I'm in. All right, so Isip, give me a crafting Numenera roll. And then would I be able to provide an asset here for assisting? No, because okay. um, you by default have an inability in crafting Numenera. So actually, uh, you would do the opposite ah. of helping. Oh, okay. <laughs> then I will just say, I have learned what I can learn. Here you go. Look at it. <laughs> I have heard quite an, quite a story that has to deal with doing these things, but oh, yeah? I don't think we have time for us to go through that. Right <laughs> now. I rolled a 12. Great. Um, and you, I believe, are specialized. In yep. Yes, you are. Great. Um, so, you know exactly what's wrong here. A um, couple of units of parts, a uh, bit of IO here and there. That'll get it working, but key to all of this is that this is missing a K-On dot and it needs that to function. Um, K-On dots are kind of very specific in where they appear. Um, so finding one of those might be a little bit of a challenge. Mm. Question. Mm -hmm. Would it be helpful for me? It's kind of early, but to use uh, my data sphere siphon to know where to go to acquire this. Totally. And uh, since I have a level six, I have three questions, right? Yes. Um, um, and and they all need to be used now. That's it. I Let's do. see here. It is a level six data sphere siphon, which is the highest level of this. So I'll say that, no, they don't need to all be asked right now, but they need to be <laughs> asked let's say within six hours okay i'm cool with that mm -hmm. and it's this uh small handheld device with these kind of crisscrossing wires that when it gets activated they sort of like hum with electricity and it sparks up the visualization of the data sphere so i think we're gonna have to go what's the name of the part again a kaon dot so you can absolutely ask the uh data sphere where the nearest place to find a kaon dot is so uh all right everybody looks like we're gonna need this uh K on dot to fix this um to get it going and um pull out my what exactly uh, data needs to be fixed uh, what what is the problem i guess we're trying to solve here is it getting back <laughs> is it going i think it's just to get it going at this point to see what this experience is they're talking about and then I guess we'll have to worry about the consequences of turning into data at this point after. Well, you know, we're, there's other options. <laughs> we haven't gone through all those yet, but this is a great, you know, let's put that on the list. Data sphere, possible way of travel. I squint at Armida and I say, so do you want me to find out where this thing is or not? Oh, yes, of course. Everybody else cool with that? All right. All right. D Data sphere siphon. Where, where, <laughs> where is this missing piece? <laughs> you, you, you hear a bunch of um, chimes and whistles, um, and then something that sounds like somebody stepped on a tiger's tail. And, um, and um, the <laughs> the uh, the sounds of the data sphere siphon uh, yes. working uh, relax Isip a little bit because it reminds uh, him of uh, things that function. Um, outside of this, the chaos of this shop. And then there's some buzzing and beeping and then what sounds like jazz, but um, <laughs> not great jazz. And it eventually says, um, Methus 4 in the sockets has a K on dot. Did everybody hear that? Methus oh. 4 in the sockets. We're going to have to head there. 
I don't believe there's a lockdown for that area. Does anybody know? Uh, well, we'll get there. All right. Is Mephis for a person, a shop, a section of the sockets? Do we know that? You could ask the data sphere, Seth. I'd rather ask somebody in the sockets. <laughs> 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 Uh, so uh, um, Isip looks around at everybody and does anybody know the distance from here to the sockets a 10 minute walk far not bad everybody okay to head over there together let's go all right Um, Felks and Elks and Fole Elks and Elks foil. And foil. Elks and foil. That's You're what pre- the sign said. Well, we don't have a lot of room to work with. The, the name of the shop is called Elks and Foil and you. And so foil had suggested that to abbreviate it, the sign should say EFU, but I don't think that's a great idea. All right. Well, Elks and foil. I don't know. I, it'll work. But it's catchy. Hmm. Make sure to get the word out, but we're we're gonna i think we found a way of being able to fix this thing and we're gonna go off on that and, and try to help you and uh oh great the uh, we appreciate your <clears throat> messy hospitality we'll be back so ruminating on the idea of the consequences of being turned into data as yeah, we're walking I'm out real i sort of like nudge myself. rylan <laughs> hey when you go into the data sphere and you come back out do you think that's really you or like a copy of you like writing a copy of a book it's not the same book it's the same information do you think it's really you i have no idea why you would ask me that question um but uh <laughs> if i had to guess based on no information i would probably say and then rylan just keeps walking um <laughs> and you kind of cut it off yeah just fully like mm-hmm. just like it's like actually like like basically like building it up like mm-hmm. we're about to have a like yep. an in in depth like intellectual de- debate and then just turns and just walks yep. away <laughs> okay fidget i kind of have the same concerns for myself um now since you have those concerns armida you you might be thinking of the other way you know to get into the lambent <laughs> yes. fields um, which is actually a place that you will be passing by on your way to the yeah. sockets it is a so on our <laughs> way by let's just stop by this little shop All right, so um, following Armada's lead, she takes you to um, this gorgeous jewelry shop um, that is just has walls lined with these like unbelievable pieces of jewelry from like the most small, um, like intricate designs to like things that look way too large for anyone uh, to wear. Some of them look like they're made out of light. There are others that kind of animate or move. Um, there's there are there's an entire set of jewelry that look like rings, but attached to them are little people, and they sort of walk around in a circle in this uh, in this little diorama setup. And um, a woman pops up from behind the counter. Armada, you know her as Mia. Well, good day, Mia. Oh, it is great to see you. How's business? Wonderful as always. And I look around the shop. Who is there a bunch of people in the shop? There are, yeah, some people looking at different ornaments and such. Um, may we talk about outside matters? Sure. And as she says that one of the one of the guests picks up a necklace and goes, This smells like tree bark. Is it tree bark? I kind of smell that way. <laughs> Do you prefer tree bark? Just, it looks like it. Not. Did I just put that? I'm just gonna put that one away. Um, uh, so Mia walks into the back room, um, invites you and anyone else in. I she sniff goes, the necklace on my way in. <laughs> it smells like tree bark, although it looks like it's made out of leather. Interesting. Yeah. Mm. Tree leather. Tree leather. 
That Try makes that? me extremely uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> like contemplating the uh, the implications of that. Oh, just wait. Um, so, <laughs> uh, she takes you into the the back room, which is filled with jewelry being kind of made at various stages, and you see all of the tools for making jewelry and small little, you know, screwdrivers and clamps and things like that. And she sits on a stool and she goes, "So what's up?" Mm. Well, we're maybe possibly thinking about an expedition of the sorts that we've talked about before and we need you know and things have ramped up a little bit within the site and so we kind of need to get in and out with no prying eyes or listening ears that would be a horrible idea <laughs> I mean, as you know, right now, nobody aside from those people who just showed up are allowed in there. And well, you know, the that route that you're referring to, you, of course, being someone who's never gone there, probably wouldn't know. Um, things have been messy. And um, well, you believe it's a little... Um hot oh, well uh, okay i'll be a bit more specific so um i had heard that there was a massive explosion and that a bunch of people went running scared for their lives because giant glass beetles came running after them so even if things weren't kind of hot i don't know if i'd be really willing to send you in there as a scavenger, is that the sort of thing that happens out in the lambent fields or is that just like ah that's the natural wildlife I mean, to a certain degree, the ninth world, that's kind of, you know, that's kind of par for the course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> although, um, what I will say is that there have been relatively kind of safe routes to get in there. Um, one particular that she's referring to is a kind of underground path that has been, up until now, very safe. Um, so now hearing this, that's kind of not the case anymore. So um, what's this, um, uh, what's this character's name again that we're talking about? Mia. Okay, Mia, and um, uh, unlike other characters that we've been interacting with so far, including this crew that we're with, um, Isip nods very, um, um, I, I very much trust Mia and uh, solely based on the beautiful tools that I've seen around <laughs> the jewelry. So I'm just like, hmm, yeah, definitely trust everything Mia says. So... Hmm. Sounds so, like we may have to. There's turn no into other data. routes that are possibly a B plan, or <sighs> the main route is well really not preferred. And her hand kind of goes over a bunch of tools and ornaments and stuff, and she pulls out this jar. She says, "I'm really interested in those glass beetles." Okay. I could possibly vouch to let you in if you would agree to get me a sample from one of these creatures. Could make for some incredible jewelry. But I'll only let you in if my other two sisters agree. Of course, of course. I would <laughs> never go against your your family business. Um just give us some time to talk it over and I'll come back maybe in a couple of hours or so. Yeah, sure. My sisters, Emma and Tora, are in town, so should be able to and bump into them. of course, we all know that this is between us. Our of business. course, of course. Um, question. These, these beetles, I, I'm, I'm sure like Rylan would have, would have, would know about them, but like how, what, how big are they? Um, like, are you are they... specialized in survival. Go ahead yes. and give me a roll, intellect okay. roll. Sure, sure. Um, yeah. Um, sure. Okay, let's go. Oh, that. Uh, um, that's a sixteen. Okay, great. You know that there are kind of like glass beetles in the area, but they're like beetle-sized. So. Okay to hear that people were running 
<laughs> for their lives from these creatures you have seen in the area is a little right. So uh, I think strange <laughs> that that kind of like clues me in that these beetles are probably distinctly not beetle sized. So uh, that's kind of the at least that's the takeaway that Rylan takes. From what it. was so, the okay. size of the jar she she was handing? <laughs> jar sized. Like this. Well, she said she wanted a sample. Right. Oh, yeah, so, so it could be a leg or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Just, uh, cool. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you. We'll, we'll be in touch. Thank you for your time. Sure. Yeah, it was very nice. And I you. like the new rings. The oh, walking rings. Thank you. Uh, we'll talk later, but those are just as exquisite. I'd love to know where you get your tools. Some of them are made. Um, some of the walking rings actually make some of the tools. They're sentient. Mm -hmm. Don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. Just don't tell them that because it's going to be a whole thing. I feel like Rylan like nods at that, like with a very knowing, like, yeah, I've been there, like kind of nod, like, <laughs> like, like, mm, yeah. Um, so when we're outside, I, uh, I just say, I'm not particularly inclined towards one of these paths or the other, but I think my, in my experience, it's always a good idea to have a backup plan. I agree. So, do and how we we're want... working like a team, having these conversations and everything. Oh, this is great. Uh, on to the, the other part, at least. Yeah, so we can get that part of the plan. At the very least, I mean, worst case scenario, we fix this thing and then don't use it. Armada, you don't work with other people very often, do you? I work with quite a few people. Your social <laughs> skills say otherwise. R Rylan just sort of like leans in and, and whispers to Fidget, and just just not for very long. So, are we to head to the sockets? I think so. Yeah. Right. Asking about, I forget what the name of the th what we're looking for is a socket. Oh, the Kion dot. Right, no, no, no. The, the the specific piece of information that we were given about the sockets, about like what we're supposed yeah, to look something for. for. Yeah. Oh, uh, Methus Four. Methus Four. Okay. Four. Okay. So, um, so, a bit of a short walk through Picala. Um, you arrive at the sockets. Um, this just. It's this colossal piece of brass and gold machinery. You can see these enormous hollows of various different shapes. Some look like giant triangular openings. Others are complete circles. Others are squares. Um, indeed, it looks like perhaps some ancient machine had things to plug into this. Um, almost looks like an oversized engine, perhaps. Um, there is a grand door that's about two or three hundred feet wide and there are people coming and going dressed in uh, workers clothing overalls stained with oil and, and grease they're moving heavy machinery um, yeah quick question mm -hmm. um, when we're walking I'm just one like generally when we're walking around I'm just wondering where everybody sees their character in terms of like order of like how we all walk. Are we next to each other? Like who's up front? Uh, I will follow whoever I think knows where they're going. <laughs> <laughs> I am probably walking beside somebody at all times. Who or um, where that is, it's not really matter to me. I feel like I'm, I don't know why, but I'm like picturing us walking in more of like a cl like a cluster than we'll like see. a, cool. you know, that's kind of what I'm imagining. Just because cool. like I know that like Rylan, he, he's a guide, but like he's not accustomed to being in the city, so mm -hmm. like doesn't know the city super well. So is probably sticking kind of close to sort of like the middle of the group, mm -hmm. and just like eyes are like constantly just sort of like flicking every direction. 
I feel like I'd, I'd generally just be towards the back of the cluster. I guess I will be in the lead then because I must be knowing where we are going. <laughs> <laughs> so I just start looking around. I'm like, so what exactly are we looking for or asking about? I mean, we're, we know the name of something, but anybody know what it is? Yeah. Um, is there any way I could do a knowledge check for like if I know what the uh, K on dot looks like? Uh, you, as a right, 100% know what a K on dot looks like. Okay. Cool. Um, Methus 4, I mean, there are people walking in and out of this place. Uh, could ask somebody. And that was my plan. Um, I will probably walk up to anybody that seems familiar to me, um, given my previous business in the city and the fact that I've lived here. Mm -hmm. um, so if like anyone's a familiar, an acquaintance, and uh, another salvager, maybe I'll just sort of approach anybody. Yeah, uh, hey. you see somebody you know, mm -hmm. uh, their name is Jora, um, and they work for a freelance mining operation that's here sure. in the sockets. Hey, Jora, you got a second? Fidget, what's up? Yeah, uh, quick question. I'm looking for something around the sockets called Methus 4. Does that sound familiar? Oh, Methus, yeah. Um, yeah. They, they, they oversee all of the um, entries and departures out of the sockets. Um, oh, gotcha. All right, great. Thank you. Sure. You have a good night. You too. I will go report back to the group. Yeah. Yeah, we're looking for somebody who oversees all the entry and exits uh, hmm. to and from the sockets. So, so are we thinking the doors then? The grand door over there that looks to be two to three hundred feet wide. Yeah, that would that would be a good place to start for sure. All right. Yeah, so if you enter, um, the place is just a cacophonous noise of machinery and grinding and you hear metal slamming together, all sorts of stuff. There are a series of signs um, that you can sort of find your way. Um, mm -hmm. You arrive at a, a small office kind of as you're going through this this whole structure. It's like a just a honeycomb of these like circular uh, um uh, passageways and stuff, very winding, very easy to get lost, but there are some helpful signs and stuff. And uh, you arrive at this small office, um, and as you do, um, a woman comes walking out of this office um, just with a horrible look on her face, looks at the group of you, squints, and then walks off. <laughs> and if you look inside, what you see is an individual uh, who is quite large in terms of their overall physical stature. The width of their legs and arms, enormous. They're covered in matted fur. Um, they have attached to them a belt with all of these kind of pipes running out of it. Um, and there are these screens that they're looking at. And um, for those who may be familiar with the Ninth World creatures, this is a Lattimore. And um, <laughs> He's just kind of mummering to himself as he's swiping through a bunch of things on these panels they're looking at. Uh, should I ask that person? Um, if you're willing to. I'll, whatever will help. I will go up there. And uh, I look Excuse at Rylan me. and Fidget. I don't know what the appropriate uh, greeting is, but... Excuse me, uh, I do have a query. Maybe you can help me. Sure. Uh, we're looking for a, um, what is this thing called? It, the, the dot. Uh, a Kaon dot. Kaon dot. They shut off several of the screens. And they look at you. What do you need that for? Uh, for business. Um, it, it's we need you know we're on a thing. We need to fix some type of uh, Numenera. Uh, I myself am not inclined for such things. I am just on an errand to try to get get this um, part. I believe it is, and uh, 
I don't know if we've met our, our meat is fire. Um, I'm Methus. Methus 4. Uh, Methus, great to meet you. Um, I'm just, we just need that. Uh, there's a person that's trying to open up a, a shop and they need this part to be able to fix their, um, this artifact that they're using. Two little goat guys? Correct. Can't help you. Can't Turns help on the us. screens. <laughs> You don't back like to doing whatever people? they were doing. <laughs> um. Oh, there's a goat problem here. I uh, <laughs> just say, all right, we don't have time for this. And I like walk in. And I'm like, listen, you don't want any problems here. I think your job is to make this place run smoothly. We can be, as you have probably noted already, a huge problem. So maybe just give us what we want to know. At the very least, open up. Like you don't even have to give it to us. Just like just let's open a conversation. That's all we want to do. Have a conversation. You deal with us, or you deal with the problems we leave behind. Uh, and I'm using my apocalyptic, apocalyptic stare. stare. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, give me a roll. Uh, all right. <laughs> Um, I am going to uh, use uh, a, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna use two levels of effort here. Okay. Um, on this one. Uh, oh god. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, that's another sixteen. <laughs> All right. I have a GM intrusion for you. Incredible. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Always. Who are you going to give the other XP to? Oh gosh, uh, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to Armada because. Okay. <laughs> but, by the way, I, I had failed to mention it earlier. You all started with at least one mm-hmm. XP. I saw that. Yeah. So, as you are ready to deliver possibly one of the most um, intimidating speeches of your life, <laughs> that woman who had walked out pokes her head in, and she cuts you off, <laughs> and she says. They're an asshole. Don't listen to them. They're not going to give you anything they want because their whole point is just stall. Isn't that right? That's why you're not letting anyone leave here, isn't it? No one's leaving the sockets. Mathis lets out a sigh. Yes, orders of Sackle Spire, only the order of truth are allowed into the lambent fields. And as per your request, no, the goat people are a problem. I lost in a game of cards to them. They have my bird. You're talking about the... (laughs) That's flower. Flower. Okay. Uh, You can get my bird back. Maybe I'll give you the K-On dot. But they cheated me in that game. Oh, boy. Machines... (laughs) I'll work with animals. That'll be have to be one of you three. Honestly, at this point, I'm more inclined to go get eaten by some beetles. So <laughs> I, 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 we I need... signed up for one thing, not errands. Well, I believe that we have something to discuss. Let's head our way back. Maybe have a bite and discuss our next steps. I see. What exactly is a K on dot? Like, what does it do? Uh, GM, I can answer <laughs> for you. Um, so it's a form of iodum. Uh, it's uh, kind of these glowing little blue specks uh, of concentrated force, and um, they can preserve objects and other things in, in a very pure state. So they are often very much desired for a variety of functions of the Numenera. Okay, so I have an idea. <laughs> so if this is a little moat of force and it is good at preserving things, I have a desiccation cipher. If I disassembled it, is it possible that there is a K-on dot inside the desiccation cipher? Let's find out. Uh, your desiccation uh, it's level My eight. My desiccation cipher is level eight. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Do you want to try disassembling your desiccation cipher? 
Maybe away from other people, <laughs> just in case. Perhaps. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I feel like Asim's um, curiosity and fascination would overtake him, so I would oh, like to watch. I would certainly invite the group of us, but I'm not about to, you know, disassemble a bomb in this poor Latimore's office. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. This bitch does eight damage. It's powerful. Yes. Um, <laughs> Asim, you are trained in salvaging Numenera, so um, you can put if you want to help, that can count as an asset. Then mm-hmm. I'm specialized, so that will be bringing Absolutely, it down. Absolutely, I levels. would love to help. Fidget, yep. this isn't a. I'm just so excited to watch mm-hmm. this, and this is maybe the most excitement that ECP has shown thus far. Yeah. All right, so, so we're going to will... have to do two rolls here. One sure. is the salvage attempt to disassemble mm-hmm. it, which is equal to the level of yep. the source, which is a mm-hmm. level eight. We've mm-hmm. got three counts toward that, brings it down yep. to a level five. Uh-huh. You can, of course, put effort into that as well. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's see. So I'm going to like walk very far away from the sockets outside. And I'm just gonna like sitting like cross-legged in the grass, like holding this, like, it's like a little, like imagine the liquid metal uh, that uh, the Terminator in Terminator 2 is like, it's like, it's like that. It's this sort of like amorphous globby metal stuff. I'm just and gonna, I'm, yeah. Good? I'm- Oh, I just I'm gonna as you're as I as like I get the sense that this is going to potentially be a dangerous thing to do. I'm just gonna like come in and just like I I think there's just sort of like the um I'm just going to like from my from like my hands, which you would probably notice at this point are like fully metallic, um just like project a like cocoon of energy around you and i'm gonna i'm gonna use uh energy protection okay um and i'm gonna set it to protect against kinetic energy because that seems like the best catch-all way of doing this yeah isip is looking at uh uh uh, raylan and uh fidget like man i'm starting to like this crew and in my head i'm like (laughs) just this damn armada (laughs) ouch (laughs) roasted oof so you have now you both of you oh actually if i'm gonna do it in both i have to hold on let me just double check uh i guess it's all of us it would be me included but sure yeah in that. but so yeah i i'll spend a level of effort in order to okay. get uh all three of us okay um or yeah i think i have to yeah, I mean it's one of these it's one of these plus abilities. So right. I'm 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 willing to have you spend more points for it to right, be that's... you know malleable to shape it in sure. a way that you're desiring it for that effect. I'll just say this: I'll I'll do all of us, and I'll figure out the math on my own. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, and I will reduce it further by two levels with effort. Great. Okay, so we're down to a level three. So you need all to roll right. a nine. All right, here we go. That was almost a one. Yeah, so <laughs> the digital die from Foundry yeah. just like was on the edge of nearly being a one. And oh, it's so bad. Oh, the things I was thinking about. Um, <laughs> so you start cracking this thing open um, in a very, very clear and precise and direct way. Um, and uh, there is, in fact, a K on dot. Uh, in here. Um, There could actually be more than one, potentially. Um, I'm going to ask now for a second salvage task to now remove the Kaon Dot from this safely. Um, A Kaon Dot is a level 7 piece of Iotum. So this is a level 7 task. We can apply that same default three-step reduction. Yep. Two from you being specialized and the help from Asip. All right, let's see. And I am going to, again, spend two levels of effort. All right, so you only need to roll a six. Yes. <laughs> that was almost a 20, though. Did you see that? I did <laughs> see that. That would have been that was almost, almost a 20. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you successfully extract these tiny uh, glowing specks, um, and uh, they, 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 they give off. You can almost hear this faint humming in the air with the, the energy they're emanating. Um, you have extra- extracted two units of uh, Kaon Dots. And um, uh, I just look around at them, fascinated by Fidget's skill, and I just ask Fidget, that was wonderful. 
Do you mind Thank if you. we embrace in celebration? I don't mind at all. Thank you. That was Do it beautiful. Really slowly, because you're protected against kinetic energy. <laughs> Love it. As you guys are celebrating, um, you hear footsteps, and a line of people walk past you dressed in these robes with this symbol on them. These are very clearly the order of truth. They're talking in some language you don't really understand, and they all kind of stare at the four of you as they're walking past you further into the sockets. I stare right back. Yeah, Rylan mean mugs the whole group of them. Mm. Just kind of was um was Fidget able to put the um can dots away, or did the Order of Truth see that we extracted them? I mean, I, I will I will say that like the activity that happens here in the sockets, like this is per, like it's deconstructing okay. an object where there's like mining equipment and other stuff. This is not an unusual thing. Okay. I'm going to take this opportunity to take a recovery roll. Sure. Yeah. I've spent a lot of intellect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, double checking. Do I need to deplete anything for helping with the deconstruction? No. Okay. You do not. Right. So what do you guys do? Well, now we have the thing, so we can fix the the artifact. But is that really is that what we want to do, or do we want to just ha keep that as a backup somehow? I think maybe we should at least fix it before we head over to the entrance with the beetles, so that we ensure a backup plan. If that's okay with everybody else, I agree. It's good. How loudly are you kind, speaking? And it's a kind thing to do. Um. Are we? Are they? Are they still here? Sorry, they're I not. Didn't... Oh, they're not. Okay, other people cool. might be. Right. Um. <laughs> here's the thing. I was I definitely think... whispering that. <laughs> I think. I was going to say I think that Rylan is not uh, is not accustomed to being places where people can hear him. Uh. <laughs> so Rylan wouldn't be speaking at like full like out loud volume, but like, you know, probably wouldn't have thought to. You know keep it down but yeah uh oh <laughs> well maybe we can just allude to our plans maybe we should have a word our journey <laughs> things like this <laughs> <laughs> well down the hall from you is the woman who so rudely interrupted your attempts to imitate Methus Rylan um, who has also been in and out of that office um, and she is just standing there with her arms folded, looking at the four of you. She's still staring at us, everybody. Um, ma'am, how are how are you today? May we help you with something? She says, "You know, those outlanders can get into the lambent fields." Is that record? Your conversation with Methus, how'd that go? Not well. Yeah. So what are you guys doing around here? What company well, do you work for? I don't think I've seen you around here before. Well, as we stated earlier, uh, we're here looking for uh, this iotum uh, part to be able to help out a business in need in the grace. Hmm. Odd jobs, mostly. Ryland and I, well, most of our work happens out in the lemon fields, scavenging, searching, you know, that sort of thing. So, now that the fields are closed, we take what we're Well, ahead. they're closed. There is one way to get in there. Lady, are you suggesting we dress up like these foreigners to get into the Lambin Fields? Well, they have an airship docked in there. You get the codes from Methus. Why are you so readily sharing this information with us? Because I want to get back into the Lambin Fields to see what they're up to. Oh, wow. 
this is let hold that thought we're just gonna take a little sidebar over here not and I'm that just we gonna... need to go into the lamb it feels but i can't understand that you're yeah that you're in need make me a make me a deception task roll there armada because <laughs> you are lying right now <laughs> yes <laughs> Oh yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're an Arcus, right? So yes, that's not. You know, I'm trying to pull that up. I am going to put two levels of effort into this. All right. And I do need to calculate that. So I do have an edge intellect edge of four. So mm -hmm. that leaves me with one point or two points. One. To spend one if you're putting two levels of effort because that's yes. five total mm -hmm. all right I'm and gonna... really quick yeah. she brought up the lambent fields first right yes she did okay yes, she did. just sure i mean it's not totally unusual the lambent fields is an incredible mining opportunity and the fact that snackle spire has issued like a <laughs> this mandate that like nobody but the order of truth is allowed in there uh would definitely irritate people whose livelihoods are require them going in there and bringing back valuable stuff. Okay. Good to know. All right, here it comes. Yeah. 15. Yeah, so um, you tell a convincing, a convincing <laughs> lie. But we will keep it in mind. We are, so, so you're in look in ways for us to get that. And what do we get in return for this? You ever been there? Oh, not not directly, no. Yes. It's beautiful. <laughs> the trip there is definitely worth its price. Hmm. <laughs> well, we will take it under announcement. Do you? Uh, is this your area of? I'm Thela Europe, head of one of the freelance mining companies here. You could understand my irritation at my business being ground to a halt. I could totally understand that e commerce is very important for many in this community. We do have some things to discuss and we have a delivery to make. Uh, but uh, can we come back in a couple of hours? Sure. All right. And let maybe we can discuss this further. If you don't see us, then I guess you'll have our answer. All right. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And so let us go to that place I was trying to get us to before, and maybe we can have a discussion. Yeah. Okay. And um, just so you all know, I would love to avoid being uh, indebted to somebody who runs oh, a mining company. Absolutely not. We're not doing that. Like, <laughs> the, the, sh notice okay. that there's... Let, let's wait till we get back. I was we'll assuming that we were, that we were already walking team. away. Of maybe course, our mate is considering this. <laughs> I'm not considering anything yet. I'm putting out all the options, and I will let those that are of more knowledgeable means of travel make that decision. Mm. We will have an open conversation, <laughs> and and from that we shall have our decision. All right. I really would love to fix this uh, artifact, though, because um... and I think that would be a very kind act, and it should be done regardless of our decision. Is my sure. vote? Sure. I, uh, <laughs> I. Uh, agree with this. Uh, I'm not interested in because think. I mean, think about that. Like we, if we take that route, there's no reason why we couldn't. She didn't give us a reason why we couldn't just do it without taking her. And so that means that if we go without taking her, she'll know, and she will rat us out. Right. But if we but if we take her, then like Asip said, like we are, we end up potentially entangling ourselves with a mining company. I'm not interested in what that. What could go wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like and... maybe maybe you don't have anything to lose from that uh, from that Armada, but 
my usual operation once the Lambent Fields open up again could be heavily compromised by being in any way involved with a mining company. Well, I don't believe that it is the most secretive of arrangements, and it probably should be avoided. Yeah. That is purely my f feeling. I'm not trying to adjust the vote in any manner. Speaking of, if that's something we're concerned with, maybe the marker are the best way to go. Because, sure, we go into the data sphere, but I don't think they mentioned following us. And Rylan or Isit or Armada, please correct me if I'm wrong, but we can go plenty of places that aren't the lambent fields if we go into right. the data sphere. So no one yes. can prove we went anywhere or did anything mm -hmm. if we took that route. For everybody's comfort, um, I know my siphon is almost on its last legs, but I'd be willing to inquire in the data sphere as to what would happen to our bodies after becoming information. Well, it, yes, it is definitely a concern. I've never done such a thing. I am more of a hands-on kind of gal, um, but uh, so to say, um, but you know, there there is a lot of, uh, um, a benefits. I mean, we are in, it possibly out. I don't know. From from the fields, we do have to go to this White Lake, which we. Does anybody know where that's located? Would be nice. Maybe there's a, what do they call these vertice? Is that what that is? These these landing points, mm -hmm. um, and we can use. Maybe there's one in this White Lake. That we, so I don't see a big downside other than maybe part of our body stay in the statosphere forever and we lose part of ourselves. <laughs> Beyond of that, <laughs> <laughs> I, and I don't can't say for sure. I've never done it, but uh, I mean, it's just a fear I kind of personally have, and um, but I'm not ruling it out, and uh, yeah. Honestly, at this point, my vote is for Beatles. How far into the Lambent Fields is the place we need to go? Because the fields themselves are like 100 miles wide, right? Yeah. Um, we will say that that um, dig site was sort of in the middle of the Lambent Fields. Mm -hmm. so which then also does give uh, good reason for doing either the airship or the data sphere mm -hmm. should we at least head back to elks and foil yeah all right if you head back you see elks and foil outside of their shop one of them has a, a drum and the other is blowing into this tube um, and they are just making this absolute racket. Um, when people kind of walk past them in the street, they quickly pick up pace um, because this is some of the most annoying sounds you've ever heard. And the horn that one of them, that foil is blowing into, just it rapidly descends uh, and ascends in pitch at, it just sporadically. Um, and the drum has this just grating, rattling noise, and they seem to be completely unbothered. Uh, and, and in fact, they seem to be enjoying themselves. Armada, what do you think of this music? It's music. Uh, I believe it's pleasing to someone. I'm not sure I could emulate it. <laughs> A very diplomatic answer. And every few <laughs> moments, they stop what they're playing, and they just shout out yeah <laughs> oh so are we able to just to walk are we just walking in and sure all right we better stop this <laughs> we <laughs> let's give them something else to focus on for a little bit yeah <laughs> 
Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they see you and they, they kind of stop and they go, oh, you're back. You're back. Yeah, can we turn down the drum music? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, we, yeah, 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 thanks. Yeah. Interesting. Is, is there a style of that or is that? Oh, well, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's something we're trying out. Yeah. Maybe like the theme song of our store and play it as people walk in. Get or with the, the theme song. That's a unique yeah. idea. Get them in the mood to buy something. You music does soothe. Maybe not drums, but it does soothe. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely better than our other idea, which was to dress up as those order of truth people. Um, yeah. Getting yeah, more... they're not real well liked. They're kind of outsiders. That might not be a good idea. Getting more comfortable with the group and letting his snark out a little bit, he mutters to everybody. Those yes they were yelling should have been nose <laughs> so uh did you did you get the, the kaon dot uh from we uh Mathis there we we did not we obtained one they didn't mention us right we Some... well we we it came up um and that's why we had to do and and i would like to say that that fidget here is is gladly um, providing the dot from her own um, toolbox. So you can keep your mooing bird. I wave at the bird again. Hey, flower. It moves. Mm. <laughs> Point being, we do have your dot, and it didn't come from Mathis. Fantastic. I'll give it over to the seat. Appreciate it. All right. So uh, this is going to require a crafting Numenera roll. Hmm. Um, it will also require, I'm going to say, four units of IO. Okay. And a unit of parts. One, two, three, four. Um, one and, unit of parts. Mm -hmm. okay. And uh, I believe I said this was a level five object. Yes. Okay. A while back. Yes, I did. Okay. Um, yeah. So this will be a level five crafting human error roll. Oh, there it is. My cat was playing with the dice. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, since you're specialized in crafting human error, that'll bring it down to a level three. So you only need to roll a nine. You can put effort into this. Um, you could, in fact, put three levels of effort into this and have an auto success uh, that would cost four, five, six, seven points of intellect. Mm. I'll rock a roll. All right. Straight up. Do you want to put any effort into this at all? You could put one level of effort into this for free because you have an edge of three. Mm. Okay. Yeah, I'll put one level of effort. Yeah. In. So you'll knock this down to a level two, so we need a six. <laughs> Six straight up a six. Oh. <laughs> I was pushing that effort. <laughs> Just in case oh. something like this would happen. <laughs> Man, Isif's confidence almost got the better. <laughs> um, so I'm going to tell you that this, um, this, this takes about an hour for you to do this. Um, but you will do it successfully. In the meantime, you have an hour. What would the other party members like to do in that time? So I would like to start with a conversation, uh, maybe a short conversation and see what do you feel that our next steps are? Should we be planning for this data sphere thing? And what and how can we best accomplish this if it is the data sphere? I, I'm tiny, even though my fears aside, I do believe that it is the most quietest option yeah i mean it's it's quiet but i think you you said it right off the bat right like how do we even prepare for that at the very least the the beetles and the dangers of the lambent field those are things we can prepare for um 
at least a little that's, bit better. It's definitely a more normal, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, normal thing. <laughs> if um, there is such a thing in the ninth world, yeah. <laughs> You've never had a tussle with one of these beetles? No, because they're usually they're like this. They're beetles. Oh, I'm guessing oh, this see. is something abnormal. I think what the data sphere helps us most with is time. It's it's a long way out to the big site. And there's a lot that can go wrong between here and there. A lot of opportunity for us to get spotted. And a lot of preparation we would have to do to make a journey that long. I mean, perhaps not for you, Rylan, but I know I would need. Does anybody know the 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 how long it is to this white lake from where we are? It's up river, I think, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So north, but it's about 150 know, miles there. You don't know the distance. So it would be closer to be back here and then go, or go from the site. Yeah, the it's it's definitely closer to come back. Come back and then go. Yeah. Okay. So should we prepare at least if we are going to do the data sphere? Why am I saying this? <laughs> does seem to be the most efficient <laughs> and i mean you could tell, tell she's really being truthful i mean and she's never really tried to pull the wall over you guys' eyes she's just trying to <laughs> say i am very very apprehensive about this but if it is the best i getting this done i think is will appease this community at least to a point we can we all agree that this needs to be done right and we need to do it so our community cannot be so it will not be start a war between these outsiders in our community so we need to get there get back and immediately leave for this white lake and i believe that the data sphere gives us our best chance at doing that yeah. yeah, this is bigger than all of us at this point. I mean, I don't even know if whatever is going to come out of the other side of the data sphere is still going to be me. It might be a really good copy, mm -hmm. but so, this is mm -hmm. bigger than all of us. So what do we know about how, I mean, uh, ISEP went in and, and kind of connected. So from that, do we know that the thing is is there a skill? Will he control that, or will each one of us need to control that? Rylan can give me an understanding Numenera role. Sure, I can do that. Um, <laughs> let's see. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think I'm gonna spend. I'm gonna spend. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and spend two levels of effort on that. Okay. So, <laughs> well, that's a seven. Okay, but you spent two levels of effort. I spent two levels of effort, and I'm trained in understanding Numenero. So. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so you know that um, entities can exist in the data sphere via what are often referred to as data forms. Um, you should be in control of yourself individually. Okay. Yeah, I'll 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 relay that. I'll just be like, I mean, I don't never done it myself, but from what I understand, we should still be able to keep some control, almost as if it was us moving the way that we would here. Um, it's just a different sort of place. A. Eh? Hmm. Where might you be having this conversation, by the way? Oh, right there in the... 
<laughs> the, he's yeah, working. pretty much. Yeah, like okay. in the store, wherever wherever Asip is working. And and while this uh, a conversation is happening happening, you'll hear every once in a while um, uncharacteristic cackling coming from Asip because uh, he's in the zone. <laughs> I will say, Ar Armada, as you're having this conversation, you see the other two sisters who own the jewelry store walk past the shop. The other two that we didn't talk to? Correct. Do they look in the window or anything? They do not. I left the, I believe that this sister, I don't know what they're doing in this part of town. Maybe they're looking for, maybe they knew we were going. This is Gray's Market, so it's not unreasonable. Yeah, so she's just walking mm -hmm. around. Yeah. So, I don't know uh, what uh, ICEP's uh vote is but i believe are we leaning towards the data sphere now i am yeah if it's a matter of saving time yeah and i did offer to um check in for a clarifying question if it would help everybody mm -hmm. we'll say at this time you've wrapped up the crafting procedure the device now kind of lights up and hums with this energy um elks and foil both just scream out a celebratory cackle of goat sounds um one of them goes to reach for the drum uh, we're not ready for the drum yet gotcha mm. he puts it down and um, as as Isip <laughs> looks over to uh, Armada in uh, in appreciation, um, uh, he starts to warm up a bit to Armada. So as the uh, I give you a nod, the, like I got your back. Yeah. So Alex and Foil <laughs> don't uh, ruin this beautiful moment of <laughs> seeing this uh, artifact work. Well, Alex says, "How about for a reward, you can have the bird." How about we we already kind of discussed the ward. I believe we fixed it, so now we get to use it. For half off. Uh, hmm. But no, I believe it was, you know, we did give you a whole part to be able to fix it that came out of our own thing. Um, half so, off in the bird. Uh, hmm. You know, um, <laughs> let me think about this again. How about... Um, you guys no. sure you don't want the bird? <laughs> I do. We do. Are not you trying to get bird. rid of the bird? It's very loud. I'll take the bird. That's completely unrelated oh, no. to the Ryland just sort of like. But I personally will take to the, bird. the drum. Just like. Can, can we come back for the bird though? I'm just kind of looking at. The... Sure. At fidget. Is that okay? Can yeah, I... we'll come okay. back for the bird. And I will say, Elks and Foil, that. Your business rides on this, and as much as I enjoyed putting it together, we do have very skilled people in our party that can easily take it apart. So I suggest you let us use it. All so right. I will try a persuasion <laughs> go for it. on them to go for free. <laughs> yeah. And I am just going to put one level of effort on it, okay. which will be free. So. I have skill and persuasion. Can offering to take the bird count as an asset? I'll take it, yeah. All right. <laughs> Effort to ease. I'll just put two and for like, the asset. This this doesn't have to be an asset, but just for flavor, uh, I think Rylan is just going to like like he's like in now like hood up again and just sort of like looks up and because of like the tech in his eyes, there's like this in the low light. There's just like this gleam and he does like the like apocalyptic stare thing again and just sort of like in the background like. Just as just in case the deal didn't sink in, this is the implied threat. <laughs> my my arms are folded, staring at them, and I, I feel like Flower the Bird is pretty excited at the prospect of possibly escaping this chaotic. <laughs> so I feel like there's some approving uh, from the bird. Well, Alex goes to lift up the bird cage, and that's like Flower starts flapping its wings, and as it does, it also lifts up this collar like a lizard. And it starts making this, this this weird half grunting sound. He goes, "Okay, I, it, uh, I'll, I'll leave it alone." All right, I rolled a fourteen. 
they nod and they go, for free it is. And we think all you need to do is just go back out the way you came to come back. Okay, we'll just kind of double check. I kind of look at the two guys that I, the two people I think, no. <laughs> I look at the rest of the group. Is that the way it works? I'll ask. And uh, <laughs> I'll use a question on my uh, data sphere siphon. All right. How do we exit and enter the data sphere safely? So, the data sphere siphon once again makes these strange sounds. And it says, A Virtus. Yeah, you use a Virtus. Motherfucker. <laughs> Um, yeah, thanks, Captain. Is, is anything I could like, um, <laughs> I feel like I, since I do have this siphon anyway, I could like maybe do a perception roll to see if I like actually understand that very unuseful answer. <laughs> the data sphere. Um, it'll 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 give you a bit more information. It says, uh, "Okay, you must use Avertus to turn every atom of your body into data, and then backwards." Um, is that going to be enough for the party to be able to travel in and out safely, or are we going to have to figure it out as we go? Are you asking us, or? Oh, I, I'm asking as a, a, a not not as a character. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Um. Well, I, okay. But I, I will. How, how would you ask us? <laughs> yeah. So. I, I, I um, just... Hold Looking on. around, oh, okay. Yeah, just sorry. real quick, as this is like, so like, so as this is sort of a weird question because, like, I'm, I, I, is so the 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 vertices are they are these like stationary things or is it yes. like, okay, so there are like specific points where there are vertices Correct. that we can use. To, okay, got it. Okay, just checking. And it creates this disc, which is the vertices. The disc becomes a vertice. Yeah. So we're going to have to make sure that the goat <laughs> put the disc in a safe place. I feel like this is not the place that we should use it. <laughs> <laughs> In thinking you're right. Right here. <laughs> Maybe. But we need that. to have a secret spot. Because they will probably lose us in a game of cards. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lose the disc in a game of cards <laughs> while we are gone. So did um uh did everybody hear cheat, that though. from the data sphere? <laughs> I think you're the only one who hears that. Okay. So um, it seems we're gonna have to rely on the disc, and that's the vertice to enter in and out of the data sphere. Um, it seems kind of risky, so I think I'll take the group consensus on this since we do still have the Beatles option. So if you all would like to tread that first, I am beginning to trust everyone here and I'll go along with the party. I think at this point, it's our best bet. Armada, Fidget. I am, if, if you two of the most knowledge of this Numenera feel that it is our best bet and I I feel in my in my heart that it is the easiest option that I will go with that plan if that's what the rest of you want to do. That is true, it makes the most sense. Thank you.